Hey YouTubers, uh, Charles Rowe here. Thank you for watching today's tutorial and I'm going to teach you how to rotoscope a video. Uh, and so what you can see here is a quick little uh, video I made with my brother, um, you know, where he just stops and makes a little explosion. Um, as you can see, the quality of my brother doesn't look realistic. You can tell it's fake. Um, I shot this all on my iPhone, um, but we did green screen work inside my house, uh, and we didn't have the, the 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 lighting the way I wanted it to be. Um, but I was able to, you know, pretty much get rid of all the the nasty edges on him. Um, it just the the quality you can tell is different from my brother and outside uh, where the light looks. Um, that's something that you can easy fix and I'm gonna fix that by actually buying a new camera. I mentioned this in my recent vlog. I'm actually gonna be buying a new camera. I was thinking about getting the, the Nikon D3100 but now I'm leaning more towards either the Sony A55 or the Canon 60D. So if you have any suggestions Go ahead and send me a message or drop a comment below, and I'd love to hear which camera you think is better or a different camera you hear that is good. But I should be making a purchase within the next couple days. So uh, let's get on to the tutorial, and I'll show you how to rotoscope. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing we need to understand is um, rotoscoping is uh, just kind of like a green screen. Um, you're getting rid of uh, uh, an area so that you can manipulate um, whatever you keep to doing what you want to do. So, like with green screen, if I wanted, I could actually key out this blue just by using key light. Um, and the blue would disappear, but I'll still keep, you know, the trees. But whatever else in the footage is blue, it will disappear as well. So that can create a problem. Like right here, you see there's like a, a highlight of blue from the sky. Um, there's a little bit of blue like in here and here. Um, right in here, there's a little bit of blue on this tank. Um, <clears throat> so that would create an issue if we were to do that because then we'd be missing a lot of pieces that you need. So um, this creates your composition. I create a composition um, at 1280 by 720. Uh, that's what I normally like to work in. I just dragged my footage inside my timeline. Um, once you do that, make sure you go all the way up here to Window, click Window, and come all the way down to Brushes. Uh, make sure you have Brushes selected, uh, and it'll pop it right next to your viewer, um, your, your composition, your slug, whatever you want to call it. Um, that way you can select the different type of brush you want to work with when you go to Rotoscope. Um, oftentimes you need to have a small brush so you can get to the fine points, like down here on the ceiling. Uh, or the roof of the building, um, but then inside um, of the larger areas, you can obviously use a larger brush. So once we have all of this set up, now we're ready to rotoscope. Um, go ahead and click on the layer, and now double click, and it'll open up the layer in a special window where it opens up the original video file all by itself in its own special little viewer um, slug composition that you can manipulate using the brush tool, the clone stamp tool, um, the rotor brush tool. Um, you could even mask inside of this and it'll manipulate only this image but it's the original image so if you were to create an image out of this image in a different composition double click this image and manipulate this image it will alter the image that you have already created just so you understand how this works um, I don't mean to confuse you if I am if you have any questions obviously just shoot me a message or drop a comment below so let's start rotoscoping you want to go up to this button right here it's called the rotor brush tool um, you click it and now you have a brush that you're going to select with. Um, kind of similar to Photoshop, you'd have like the wand tool and the lasso tool. Um, this works like the lasso tool. If you just, I guess, circle around an area, a green line pops up and it pretty much picks up all of the objects in that area that are kind of close to the colors that you picked up. Because what rotoscoping does is it allows you to not have to be as precise as you want. Like I could just draw a line right here and watch how much of the area it actually picks up. Boom. See it connected from this little box that's now circled in purple letting you know what's inside that box is what you kept and it connected it with the line because this line that I drew here um, had color properties that were similar to the colors over here, similar to the colors over here, and it just was able to pick up all those colors for me without me actually having to keep circling over and keep circling over and keep circling over. So let's go ahead and get everything that's uh, pretty much, you know, um, down at the bottom half. We're going to cut out the sky because, as you saw, that's where my brother was. Cut that out. Cut that out. We didn't get that here. 
Okay, so we got that purple edge going all throughout the bottom. Now we gotta, you know, get the sharp points right up in here. Get the corner of this building. Be careful if you get the sky. If you do get the sky, um, or whatever image you're um, working with, I'll show you how to actually fix it up. Uh, in order to do that, I'll go ahead and select the sky. All right. See this little piece of sky? Let's say you accidentally selected it by just going a little over um, your, your subject. If you hold down the Option key for Mac users and the Alt key for PC users, you'll notice your brush turns into a red dot from a green dot. See, the original is a green dot. You press and hold, now it's a red dot. Now you can do the same process as you would do if it was a green dot by selecting the, the area, but this time you're going to select the area that you don't want um, and then it'll get rid of that area for you. Obviously, you gotta um, actually press the zoom. Obviously, you have to keep doing it just to make sure you get all the pieces. Um, keep selecting that. Select that in the line. And select that. Boom. Boom. And last one. Oh, come on. You know you want to get out of here. There we go. All right. So I got rid of it. Um, it's never an issue. You don't always have to double, you know, go back or do all that fancy stuff. Um, just go in and just, you know, use the, the optional alt key and just select it and get rid of it. Um, simple as uh, simple as cake. So let's go back into our building and try to select as much as we can from the building so that we can separate the, the sky and the trees from the foreground which is everything right here you see the trucks and the building and the street um, because my brother was standing behind the building now in this tutorial we're not actually going to place my brother back there because um, that would require me to green screen key uh, do color correcting and whatnot and you know I've already explained that in previous tutorials um, the purpose of this is just to show you kinda how to rotoscope um, so that you can have the knowledge for yourself and let your imagination run wild with um, things you'd like to throw inside uh, of the tutorial or inside of your video um, so that you don't have to just rely on uh, what I'm doing. Oftentimes you watch a video copilot tutorial and then you see hundreds of people duplicate that tutorial and act like it's their own project. I mean, they're doing these things to show you how to learn and use the products and the programs, not for you to just copy what they're doing and try to call it your work. So I'm going to show you how to rotoscope this um, and then, you know, let y'all run from there and see what y'all can create. So now that we've selected all the pieces that we want to keep, um, all the pieces we don't want to keep aren't selected. Uh, and just to refresh your memory so you can understand how you know when something is um, selected that you're going to keep, uh, if it's inside of the purple box or the purple outline, then that is what you're keeping. So um, that's how you know. Uh, then what you want to do is make sure you're at the beginning of your... Um, your timeline. Uh, not in the middle, not in the end, the beginning of your timeline, or should I say the beginning of the point where you want to start rotoscoping. Okay? Then click this alpha option. It's called toggle alpha. And what this will do is it'll show you in black and white everything that you have selected. Where white being the stuff that you have selected that you want to keep, and black being the stuff that you don't want to keep. Now you see here I have a couple little spots in there that I want to get rid of. So I'll get my red dot, go over that. And go over this, and go over this. Okay, now if you press it again, you'll now only see what you're going to keep. And so you can see how rough the edges are. Obviously, you'd have to smooth those over. Um, but you can see what you're going to keep, and what you're going to get rid of is the background. And uh, then you want to go to the beginning of your timeline, um, and you want to start rendering. But you also want to know how long you want to render. Um, there's a, a little rotor brush band that you see here in gray. Uh, it starts with a little yellow box, a yellow box with arrows following after it. This just pretty much um, is telling After Effects how long you want um, this uh, rotor brush or this um, rotoscoping um, effect to take place. And right now, it looks like it's only going to take place for about 20 uh, frames. And let's say you want it to last for one second. You want to click and drag the box over to one second. Or you want it to last for two seconds or three seconds. For that particular video you just watched, um, I made sure it lasted for three seconds. Uh, but just for this tutorial purpose, we're just going to drop it down to one because um, the rendering process could take a little while. Um, so 
go ahead and press spacebar um, and that will help you start to render and just let it run its course and as you can see it's uh, it's rendering out it's rendering out it's actually moving a lot faster than I expected so I don't have to worry about ending the tutorial and then coming back um, when it's done uh, but while that's taking place <clears throat> Actually, it's it's almost over, so I'll explain what I was going to explain in just a moment as soon as this is done. Okay, hurry up. It's a 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Okay, now you can press spacebar. Now you saw it kept going. It wanted to continue to roto brush or rotoscope, but there was nothing for it to rotoscope because you put the time span for one second, so it kept going. You just had to stop it yourself. So we're going to go ahead back to the beginning, um, and you'll see for one second it's rotoscoped. You see that? One second. Now we're going to go back into our composition and now we can actually see our file uh, the way it's supposed to look. Um, we're going to change the composition settings to one second. Press one second and press OK. That way we can go ahead and just make sure we're working entirely uh, with a one second video. As you can see it's rotoscoped um, but the edges are very harsh. You see they're moving very very fast and you know, rugged. Um, that's where you actually have to play with the settings of the rotor brush. So we may need to smooth it out to uh, what five pixels. Ooh, look at that. Made it a lot smoother. Maybe feather it up to fifty. You know, um, we could choke it a little bit so it can get you know nice and even. You need to refine the mat a little bit. I mean, these are settings you need to play with based on how your actual footage turned out. Whatever you're using. Um, and then you want to place your background behind it to kind of uh, gauge whether it looks right, if it doesn't look right. Um, what I did for mine was I actually put uh, the same video behind it so you actually can't tell. But um, like with my brother, um, let me just create a, a solid, um, or no, actually I'll create text. Um, and we'll write uh, um, Gandalf for you know from uh, Lord of the Rings we're gonna have to make that bigger just so y'all can see it um, and I want to get a new font something cool something really awesome let's tag this extreme okay this is a graffiti font um, I hope y'all can see that uh, if you can't oh well we'll give it a stroke just a little stroke right there and uh, we'll go to effects um, actually we'll change the inside of the color to um, red and then we'll go to effects and go to perspective, bevel alpha, and uh, that'll just help us, you know, get like a, a little 3D-ish bubble effect going on there. Uh, light intensity, let's brighten it up a bit. There we go. Okay. All right. So. We just created Gandalf text. It's in a, a nice little tags extreme font. You can find that on somewhere on the internet. I think I downloaded that from 101 fonts. Um, but we're going to take this. We're actually going to put it in between our rotoscope layer and our background. And as you can see, our layer is rotoscope. I mean, from here on, all I did was I tracked um, the motion tracking points. I selected a point over here. I selected a point over here. I motion tracked the position and the rotation, and then I just created a null object, applied the tracking to the null object, and applied uh, the Pickwick tool to um, the null object of uh, the layer. So let's say you know Gandalf was Ricky. Um, I just selected the Pickwick tool, which is also the parent tool, brought it over top of the null object, and just put it over top of the null object. That way, it copied all the properties, as I explained in you know a previous tutorial. Um, basically, you know, and as soon as it played, um, wherever the the buildings moved, you know, Gandalf would move with it, and that's pretty much it. That's how you rotoscope. So, thank you for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a wonderful day.